What's going on everybody? My name is Tomas. Welcome to a video that I've been interested in doing for quite some time. In December of 2013, Apple introduced their newly designed Mac Pro, which was quite a significant design overhaul in the way that you think about desktop computing, in addition to workstation grade uh, hardware. Anyways, they have not updated that machine since that introduction. I would really like for them to update that, but until then, I thought I would invest a little bit more money into this machine. I bought mine in December of 2014, so I waited a year, and I opted for the six core baseline, so it was around four grand when I got it, and since then I've upgraded the SSD, the RAM, and now I've gone and done the unthinkable by throwing more money at obsolete hardware. I fully understand the implications of my investment into such old hardware, but here's food for thought. I use this machine to make money, so in turn, I get something back from my investment into this hardware. I think it has paid for itself maybe two times over since I have purchased it, so investing more money into a machine that makes me money is kind of a no-brainer, especially if it's gonna save me time in my workflow. I did some digging around on eBay, which I hardly ever do, and found a brand new E5 2697 version 2 12-core CPU that works perfectly with this Mac Pro. I had been watching that listing for quite some time, and one day I just pulled the trigger. So 850 bucks down the drain, just like that. Anyways, I did the upgrade, so I went from my 6-core to my 12-core, and I was significantly surprised in the performance improvement that I received after putting the 12-core into my system. Starting off by running a synthetic benchmark, which everybody is familiar with, within Geekbench 4, with the 6-core, I was getting 3,644 with single-core performance, and then with multi-core performance, 17,428. With the 12 core upgrade, there was a dip in single core performance because the 12 core is clocked at a slower speed with single core being 2.7 gigahertz versus the 3.5 gigahertz. So I got a 3,204 on the single core performance. Uh, then jumping into the multi-core, it absolutely obliterated the six core by scoring a 24,520. Um, I also wanted to see how the computing power would work and I got a 71868 with the 6 core and with the 12 core it got a little bit of a bump because the CPU does support this processing or this benchmark uh, a little bit and scored uh, 73,134. So there is a little bit of bump in the compute power on Geekbench 4. So luckily I still had a project stored on my system that I could test. I wanted to run a render to see what the six core performance was producing. So with color grading, transitions, dynamic linking, and some adjustment layers on a nine minute and 40 second sequence, I rendered that out on the six core system at 11 minutes and 52 seconds, which isn't too bad. It actually almost is a one for one when rendering. I know this as well is a GPU intensive task. With the addition of the 12 core, I did that same render in 10 minutes and 38 seconds. Next, I exported that project into a final product using Adobe Media Encoder with a YouTube 4K preset. So it's a 40 megabits per second file that is produced at the end of that export. And with the six core system, I did that in around 21 minutes and 33 seconds. With the 12 core system, System, I did that in 19 minutes and 38 seconds. So nearly two minutes faster. And that to me alone is worth this upgrade because over time I'm going to save a significant amount of time waiting on exports. I also wanted to test another thing that a lot of people do, which is transcoding. So I took an H.264 file and transcoded that using the six core system. Um, it was a 4.2 gigabyte file and the system did that in seven minutes and 31 seconds. Now this is a CPU intensive task which is uh, why I was not surprised when I saw the actual result with the 12 core system. I did that in four minutes and 43 seconds. That alone is huge, huge, huge time savings. 
So over the life of this upgrade, I foresee myself saving a significant amount of time and found that this upgrade for me and my workflow and what I do on my system was completely worth it. If you're a person that works primarily in the Apple ecosystem and are tired of waiting for them to upgrade their hardware and you haven't yet invested in a Mac Pro system and you're interested in getting performance, uh, here's food for thought. If you were to go on eBay and purchase a quad core system, you know, the baseline uh, Mac Pro, you could get that for around $1,500 to $1,700. You buy that system, and then from there, you go and tack on some RAM. So uh, you go for the 32 gigabyte kit or something like that. And if you go for the 32 gigabyte kit, I would say get two 16 gigabyte DIMMs. That's around 280 bucks. Uh, and then you hop into purchasing a CPU. If you get the same kind of deal that I got and you get that CPU brand new for 850 bucks, you're around $2,900. So again, that's just food for thought. If you like this video, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. If not, hit that other one. Thank you for taking the time to watch. I'm Tomas and I'll catch you in the next one.